Hello everyone, you are on the Matcap channel. Today we're going to go through all the Blender modifiers, there are over 50 of them. This video will help you get familiar with all the modifiers in an interesting and accessible way. It will be useful both for beginners and more experienced 3D artists. I assure you, you'll find a lot of interesting things for yourself. First, we'll go over the modifiers from the generate block, then we'll look at the dev form, physics, and finally, the modify modifiers. Let's not waste time and get started with the first block. Modifiers from the generate block are for constructing or destroying geometry and affect the entire topology of a mesh. They can change the overall look of an object or add new geometry to it. The first modifier is Array. It allows you to copy an object's geometry and arrange these copies with certain offsets in space. You can also set the offset using another object, which is quite handy for animation. Bevel helps automatically create and adjust bevels on edges or vertices. You can set the number of segments, size or other values using the modifier settings. Boolean is a modifier that lets you edit one object using another. It's convenient for changing the visibility of objects that affect only the mesh display. The modifier allows you to subtract objects, union them, or intersect them. Build generates an animation of dissolving or constructing an object. An interesting option for randomizing the dissolve or build of polygons is randomize. Decimate helps reduce the number of polygons in an object. The modifier can be useful for creating low poly models or LODs. It includes three ways to construct the mesh. Edge split helps separate parts of geometry based on the angle between polygon faces. Geometry nodes is a modifier that adds a system of nodes a visual programming setup to edit an object. This is a vast topic and some even manage to create entire objects using only geometry nodes. Mask allows you to select vertices and create a new group. You can then specify this group in the modifier and hide either the group or everything outside it. Mirror creates mirror geometry relative to the original object or another object. Subdivision surface subdivides each face. This smooths the shape when Catmull Clark is enabled or keeps it simple if Presimple is used. This is a very useful modifier, especially for creating organic shapes. Multi-resolution is a more complex version of the previous modifier, especially convenient for sculpting as it allows transferring high-resolution shape changes to a lower-resolution mesh. Remesh helps simplify or complicate an object's geometry. There are various methods, blocky, smooth, or geometry, with sharp angles or voxels. Screw is a tool for twisting objects around specific axes. It's useful for building spiral forms like stairs or for creating bottles. The skim modifier gives edges a cubic form. You can change the thickness of these edges using Ctrl A. It pairs well with subdivision and can be useful for creating sculpting bases. Solidify gives thickness to polygons, useful when creating things like car body parts. Triangulate turns all faces of objects into triangles, sometimes useful for model export or fixing shading problems. Volume to mesh lets you fill volume group objects with real mesh. The weld modifier merges vertex groups within a threshold angle and combines them, destroying surrounding geometry. Wireframe turns the faces of an object into a wireframe form. It's an interesting modifier for creating abstract graphics. The next block we'll move to is the deform block. Unlike the previous modifiers, this only changed the shape of an object without altering its topology. This block is very useful, especially for creating various animations. Speaking of animation, I recommend Wingfox School and their course on creating stylized backgrounds for animation and 3D projection. The course covers steps in development, conceptualization, illustration and animation of drawn backgrounds for animation. The course includes 9 chapters covering texturing, animation and lighting setup in Blender. 
Later chapters focus on drawing textures in Photoshop, projecting them onto 3D models, creating particle effects, and finally rendering the finished animation. I'm personally taking this course and have completed 5 chapters so far. So if you want to learn how to create such stylized environments, follow the link below the video where you can learn more about this and other interesting WingFox courses. The first modifier in this block is Armature, used to create skeletal systems rigs for animation, character posing, and anything that needs posing. Adding an armature system to an object allows deformation, so that the geometry doesn't need to be animated manually. Cast shifts the shape of a mesh, curve, or lattice toward one of several predefined shapes sphere, cylinder, or cuboid. Curve is a simple but effective way to deform a mesh along a curve object. It works along the global X, Y, or Z axis. When you move the mesh, it follows the curve. This is useful for creating chains, suspension bridges, and more. Displace shifts mesh vertices based on texture intensity. You can use procedural or image textures. Displacement can be along a specific local axis, vertex normals, or RGB components can displace vertices in X, Y and Z simultaneously. Hook deforms a mesh, curve or lattice using another object, usually an empty or bone, but it can be any object. Laplacian deform allows control over the entire geometry, not just vertices bound to a hook. Lattice deforms a base object according to a lattice object's shape. Deformable objects include meshes, curves, text, lattices, and even metabols. Mesh deform, like the previous, allows custom objects to deform others. For example, I created a simple object matching Suzanne's shape, and by editing that shape I can change Suzanne's form. Shrink wrap allows an object to shrink to another surface, moving each vertex to the nearest position on the target object's surface. Simple deform applies simple deformation like twist, bend, taper, or stretch. The deformation amount is set by an angle or factor. Smooth smooths angles between neighboring faces, just like the smooth tool in edit mode, but without separating the mesh. Corrective smooth reduces heavily distorted mesh areas by smoothing deformation usually useful after an armature modifier where distortion around joints is hard to avoid even with careful weight painting. Laplacian smooth reduces surface roughness with minimal shape changes. Surface deform lets you control deformation of one object by changing another's mesh. Warp can deform mesh areas using two objects to select from and to regions, similar to proportional editing in edit mode. Wave adds wave-like motions to an object's geometry with adjustable height, width, speed, and other wave settings. Moving to the next block physics modifiers. The purpose of this block is to create physically accurate representations of object properties. These modifiers are used for effects like explosions, fluid simulations, fire, smoke, and more. The first physics modifier is cloth, which simulates fabric. The modifier settings have many parameters to control the simulation. Collision lets objects interact with others. Here's a simulation without collision, and here's with collision. Dynamic Paint lets you paint deformations on one object using another, useful for water immersion effects or wave creation, and more deformation types exist. Explode can be useful for animating object destruction, requiring a particle system. Fluid allows simulation of liquids, gases or fire. In the video, the simulation is created inside a special object set to domain type. You can also create obstacles and adjust various parameters. Ocean is a tool for modeling and creating deforming ocean surfaces and related textures. It's designed to simulate deep ocean waves and generated foam. Particle system creates a particle system. There are many uses, but it's most common for creating hair, 
grass, rocks, or other objects on surfaces. Particle instance copies values from a previous particle system modifier, but using the original object as particles. Similar effects can be achieved using particle system alone. Soft body simulates soft bodies with many settings, plasticity, damping, friction, stiffness, and more, and is great for things like sword animations. The last block is modify modifiers. Data transfer transfers several data types from one mesh to another, including vertex groups, UV maps, vertex colors, custom normals, and more. It's mostly used to copy normals to fix shading problems or create stylized leaf shaders as shown in the video. MeshCAC is mainly used to import animations. In the video, I export animation from one object as a MET file and then import it using MeshCAC which also allows adjusting animation strength. Mesh Sequence Cake loads data from Alembic and USD files, supporting static objects, but mainly used for animated ones. Normal Edit affects custom normals. You can change normal direction using another object. The modifier uses simple parametric methods to compute and mix generated normals with existing ones. This and several following modifiers can be useful for creating game and architectural assets. Weighted normals adjusts custom mesh normals using selectable methods, useful for making edges appear sharper without adding extra bevel segments. UV project acts like a projector for the object's UV map. You can rotate, scale or move UV maps using another object. UV Warp is similar, it transforms the object's UV map based on values or two objects, giving you direct control to move, rotate, and scale UVs in the 3D viewport. Vertex Weight is for editing vertex group weights. You can automatically change weight values using different sliders. Vertex Weight Mix lets you blend weights of vertex groups, combining several into one using different blend modes. The last modifier, Vertex Weight Proximity, lets you control weights using objects, which is very useful for creating animations requiring vertex groups. These were all the Blender modifiers. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. I'd appreciate your feedback through likes, subscriptions, and comments. Thanks for watching to the end, all the best, and see you on the Madcap channel.